If I conferred with the furry friends, man to animal, think of the amazing repartee. If I could walk with the animals, talk with the animals, grunt and squeak and squawk with the animals, and they could talk to me. Hello and welcome to Pet Watch. I'm Debbie Sims with the Williamson County Animal Center. And my special guest today for our monthly program is Jam Stewart. Hi, Jam. Hey, how are you? Good. I'm so excited to be here. Jam is with Mars Pet Care. Uh, maybe you've heard the name Mars before, if you're one of our viewers. Um, you may associate it with chocolate, and they do make a lot of chocolate, right? Yes, we do. <laughs> a number of the brands that we're quite familiar with is uh, our headquarters for that or one of the world headquarters for the whole Mars Corporation is in Cool Springs. Yes, right? our pet care division. Yep. Yeah, and what are the, some of the chocolate products people are familiar with? Let's get that out of the All way. All right, so let's get that out of the way. So Snickers, Milky Way are two of our you know biggest ones, but M&Ms, of course, iconic. So all, all the fun ones that everyone loves. Right, and I've heard you even have bowls of them in your offices as a, a perk. <laughs> we do, it's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> it is, I'm sure it's a curse, I'm sure. But we're here to talk about another division of Mars, which people may not be aware of, is their pet care division. That's right. Now, what are some of the pet food products that we would recognize? So, Pedigree, I'm sure you know Pedigree, the yellow iconic brand, Pedigree. But things like Imes and Nutro, which is what I feed my dog, um, uh, Whiskus, uh, Temptations, there's uh, all the brands that you know and love um, are in our portfolio. The greenies are quite greenies, popular. Greenies, yes, yeah. that's my favorite Green. treat to give Nash. Is my, my new little puppy. <laughs> yeah, um, we want to talk about the ties that Mars has to the county for just a second before we get into some of the bigger events that you're putting on this yeah. summer. Um, you have the corporate offices in Cool Springs, like we talked about. Now, is that for the U.S. operations of several divisions? Yeah, it is. It's our U.S. headquarters for all of our pet care businesses. So some of the brands we talked about, um, Pedigree and Greenies and mm -hmm. Neutro, Dynastics, all of that work is being done here, headquartered right here in Cool Springs and Franklin. And I don't know if you saw our recent announcement, but we just announced we're going to be moving in 2019. We're very excited to Ovation, which is the um, new mixed-use development right on McEwen. So right now we're in a couple different offices around the Cool Springs area. We will, um, we will all come together in, in one office space, in one building on that campus over wow. at Ovation. Is that already being under construction at this point? Or? Yeah, I don't know if you've driven over there recently. There's a lot going on. There is. There's I a did. lot of activity going on, but mm -hmm. uh, we're slated to move into the spring of 2019. Wow. Yeah. So all of your headquarters for U.S. operations for different parts of the company will be in one place. Yep. All, of, all of Pet Care U.S. will be there. Wow. Uh, it is a gigantic um, international company. Yes. With I don't know how many employees. Do you? I mean, overall, the company thousands, tens of thousands of employees. Yeah, we're eighty thousand plus. Wow, uh, and amazing! It's amazing to me the brands that you have in Europe and uh, across the world. And I, I've looked at your website before, and it's like a, a array of flags. It's like the it's like I'm at the Olympics, and the yeah. groups are walking in from every country. Uh, Mars is a gigantic company. You have other ties to Middle Tennessee when Mr. Mars built a farm down south of Nashville called Milky Way Farm and yeah. people can still go see that house. Yeah, you know, actually we just went there as a team last week. Wow. It's funny you bring it up and uh -huh. um, I hadn't been before and it was incredible. It was just, you know, just so special to be there and to hear the story and to see how the farm was developed and to see what the Mars family was doing for that town in Pulaski mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. during a very difficult time. It was just, I just felt so proud. Right. I, I would encourage our, our viewers to go down there and visit it. I know a lot Beautiful. of groups take group visits down there. And yes. I, I've seen photos of it, and uh, the dining room blew me away. I, I, it was better than the Biltmore. <laughs> well, that's that's where our, me our meeting, a part of our meeting was in the dining room. Yeah. You walk in, and there's this beautiful, huge, impressive table. And yeah. um, Lynn... Um, the gal over there who who runs the facility came in and told us some just really unique you know stories and mm -hmm. everyone around the table was just in awe. It was beautiful. Well, people may not really realize there really was a Mr. Mars that yes. came and built that farm and yes. built this whole company. Absolutely. And so his family members are still involved in it today. Yeah, no, and, we're still a family company, very yeah, much so. Our shelter had the privilege of of meeting Miss um, Mrs. Mars, the current Mrs. Mars, Miss um, Mars, and she visited us when we entered into. The pedigree feeding project yes. which has really helped our shelter and that's where we first 
came into partnership with you all. Yep. Uh, what is that feeding project and how big is it in this country? So we support shelters all across the country. So we've got the Pedigree Feeding Project, the Pedigree Foundation, which also um, helps support that. And then just through our own MARS programs, um, we, uh, we support shelters all across the country, whether it's through MVP programs, which is our volunteer program mm -hmm. where we go out and actually right. build and right. improve shelters, which we've done a ton of right. here in Williamson done County. It. Yes. Um, right in our backyard. Um, you guys are an incredible shelter. I know we've done a, a lot together, but the feeding program is important as well, right? We know that um, when you talk about animal welfare and you talk about pets that are in shelters, feeding is, feeding is a critical component of that. And so we do feed all across the country. Um, you know, we, beyond having this as our head, U.S. headquarters, we have manufacturing facilities around the country as well, and, and we try to really um, focus a lot of our efforts right in the backyards where we're doing business, helping mm -hmm. the communities where we do business. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of that, you know, feeding both dogs and cats, not just pedigree, but other brands as well. Right. Uh, it's a very benevolent company, and, and I've seen that from the shelter point of view, to know that our animals are being fed the, the best uh, dog food that we can possibly give them and it's a given to us by the person who has researched and made that delicious dog food and that nutritious dog food so uh, we appreciate it and I'm sure every shelter does because it saves us a lot of effort time and shipment and cost that we would have to purchase all that all the dog food uh, but knowing that they all get the pedigree brand um, well let's talk about that for a second because the innovation center that you have recently built in Thompson Station yeah is all about testing the food it on is. dogs. Now, what goes into creating a dog food? So there's there's quite a bit. So I, you know, I've been at, I've just been at this company for two years. So I've been learning all about it myself, and it is it is incredible the number of steps and the kinds of quality processes that are in place to create dog food. It, it's just incredible. You don't think about it as just a consumer of it, mm -hmm. um, which I had been before um, having uh, two dogs before coming to to work at Mars. You don't, you don't think, you don't really think about all those steps and all the processes. And then you come and you go to the Innovation Center in Thompson Station. The first time I went there, I remember just being blown away. I couldn't believe the kind of time, the quality checks, um, the research, the innovation, everything that's going into to dog food, which, you know, it, it's just a part of our daily lives. You don't think about how it's mm -hmm. actually made. And so it's been incredible to do that. And in addition to the number of human associates that we have down at the Innovation Center in Thompson Station, we actually actually also have pet associates. So we've got right. um, you know about 150 pet associates down there who are our food tasters and who are telling us what they love and what works and what doesn't work and what they like and and we're adjusting you know recipes and and you know working on nutrition and all and all of those things down at Thompson Station. So it's an exciting place. It is, and we've been privileged to place a couple of dogs there that are now living the good life. Yes, <laughs> eating the great food. And and testing it for you. <laughs> it's like the Ritz Carlton down there for these for these dogs and cats. <laughs> it's like being adopted to the Ritz Carlton. Yeah, I know. Instead of an individual home, uh, there's no question that those dogs are living the good life. There really isn't. Heated um, floors and everything. It's oh, incredible. I know. It's amazing. Um, and, and the quality of the food helps the animals at the shelter immensely. Yes. Um, because if we gave them a food that was not well tested and not nutritious and gave them a balanced diet, uh, they wouldn't have shiny coats, they wouldn't right. have happy tummies and all of that. So uh, it's amazing to me the difference in, a, in an animal's coat right. that a, the proper food can make. Yeah, absolutely. Because we get strays in that have skin conditions and just by giving them proper nutrition with the pedigree food, it changes their whole uh, demeanor, their vitality, and it makes yeah. their coat beautiful. So Yeah, well I love to hear that. It does. <laughs> uh, when you joined Mars two years ago, what what and you do all these uh, activities in the community? Yeah. Uh, I know you guys have been at our shelter, doing various projects around mm -hmm. the building, out inside and outside before. Um, what drives the Mars associate? What drives? What's the corporate? Yeah. Corporate their uh, theology, so to speak. What is? Sure. Yeah. What is it? Sure. I think it's. I think it's really two things. One, it's the company you talked about. There is a real Mars, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mars. This, mm -hmm. That's so true and. And when this company was first started, it was really founded on these its principles, a very principles values based company. We have five principles that we, you know, live by that kind of form not just how we do our business, but how we act in the communities. Um, things like mutuality, responsibility, um, efficiency, things that keep the business moving so we can be profitable, 
but also that we can act in a way that lets us have a longer term view on things. You know, being privately held, being a family run company, um, that gives us the opportunity to, to be invested, to be invested for the longer term versus just a short term, focused on a short term result. Mm -hmm. And so I think if you look at the work that we've done here, you know, since we've been members of this community in Franklin and Williamson County, um, you know, 10 plus years, I, I, I think that's so strongly demonstrated in the work that we've been doing over the last, you know, decade, not just through, um, you know, financials um, and donations and things like that and food, but through our, our, our time and our people resources as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. I mean, our, our people, our associates get so much out of being involved in this community. Not only are they proud members of the community themselves, but then to give back that sense of accomplishment, and you know, we do it during work hours. Um, you know, as teams, it's team engagement. It's you know, building relationships that you find are lifelong. You know, when you come into a company and you hear all of this and you read it all, you don't know if it's gonna. You know, I just went through yeah. this, right? You don't. You don't right. know how it's really gonna manifest itself. Mm -hmm. And for me, I just. <laughs> I just been, you know, like I said, I keep using the word blown away, but it's, mm -hmm. but it's true because you walk in and you feel it every single day. You feel that camaraderie. You, you feel that sense of, um, you know, belonging. You feel that sense of purpose. You know, our purpose is making a better world for pets, and so a lot of our kind of time, treasure, and talent for our business is is kind of focused in in that area, right? And making that world a better world for pets. So, you know, we're doing it every day. And when you come to the office after doing an MVP event which is a volunteer program, right. you know, with a bunch of associates, maybe you know them, maybe you don't, you're forming relationships, and you're doing business with these people, right? But you're getting to know them in a different way. Right. It, it's been outstanding on our end as a receiving shelter uh, to know the guys, what do you need done? Yeah. We're here to work all day. I yep. mean, it could be painting a fence, it could be hefting a 50-pound bag of dog food from one end of the building to the other. Uh, it's always a spirit of cooperation, and so uh, yeah. I, I don't know too many companies that that do that uh, as large as Mars. So is that a worldwide? It is, it's a global program. Mm -hmm. um, it, this is interesting, a couple of, uh, actually last month we were a, it, in Tucson at our national sales meeting. Mm -hmm. And we had, it was our largest uh, sales meeting ever. We had about 500 associates come together for this all across our business. We always dedicate one day to service. And this, we had a day with over 400 associates came together in one day at an animal shelter in Pima County in Tucson. And just, you know, the, the, the folks in Tucson were just blown away. They just kept saying, to have all these people in one day, the amount of time we'd have to recruit, they would take to recruit, yeah. um, the money we'd have to spend to market these volunteers, volunteer opportunities, to have this kind of work happen in one day. I mean, we literally went through this park and it was, I mean, th we did like five or six projects in one day when we were, you know, done. You know, mm -hmm. They accomplished a ton of things that they wanted to get done for the year. I hope you got that on film. We Some did. <laughs> we did. It sounds like a reality show on HG, like Crash the Shelter. With it, it, was, it, it was exactly it, like yeah. that. We were coming in, you know, all of us in our t-shirts, coming out of <laughs> vans and buses and just taking over this park for a day. And, and, you know, not just doing the activities, which was, you know, everything from, you know, we had people on jackhammers, you know, um, putting concrete in so we can mm -hmm. put some structures in to shade structures, uh, painting the shelter that they had there, putting in more green space, you know, all these things, but coming out of it, coming back on the bus and hearing everyone talk about the experience. Mm -hmm. For me, that's the gratifying piece. Oh, sure, sure. And in the shelter point of view, again, uh, their lives were changed. If this is a dog park, yeah. next, th th their lives were changed in a day. Right. Because they had this piece of property and they kept looking at it and they couldn't figure out how they're going to get the money. Absolutely. Who's going who's to do it? Yeah. Who's going to put the slab in? Who's going to drop the post? I mean, who's going to build the roof of the sitting area? It's just so many things go into it. So yeah. you guys are getting to be pros at that. So <laughs> you may be called on to crash the shelter again. <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. I had an experience a couple of months ago with um, a jackhammer, which I, I I had no idea what I was doing, but yeah. apparently I got the job done. <laughs> you held on to it. I held on here, to that's it. That's the hardest part. <laughs> it, it, was, it was touch and go at points, but yes. <laughs> it, it gets away from you out here. <laughs> yeah. um, now, one of the things that we want to talk about today is a, a very special Mars program. Yeah. Um, Better Cities for Pets. And you have the new t-shirt on do, today. I do, I do. It's got to make Mars, sure you get one. Pet Care, Better Cities for Pets, and people in our local community will be hearing more about this in the future. So yes. what is the Better Cities for Pets program? So um, 
so about 18 months ago, we uh, were literally in a conference room and talking about giving, you know, and, mm -hmm. and specifically around giving, you know, what have we done here in Williamson County and Davidson County and surrounding, and what are we doing around the country? And it, to your point, and you mentioned this earlier, you know, we are giving to shelters, we're doing feeding programs, we're doing a lot of things, but as we look at some of the data, and so we have a, a center called the Waltham Center for Research. Mm -hmm. It's a part of the business I find fascinating. So Waltham's been around for 50 plus years. Um, it, the center's in the UK, and it has been putting out research it, about pets for 50 plus years. So it's like the preeminent research center, not just for our business, but for the industry really mm -hmm. on, on pets. And what we see with some of the research that Waltham puts out and what we know about demographics and the way cities are changing is, you know, many cities are becoming more densely urbanized. I mean, even here in Franklin, here in Nashville, you mm -hmm. see that. Um, and people are having more and more pets. In some cases, people are having more pets than kids, you know, depending at the age you are. And what's, what hasn't happened is you don't have infrastructure that's really designed for pet lifestyles. You know, I think about my own, myself, you know, we have a pet friendly office um, in Cool Springs and, you know, 60 to 80 dogs coming into that office a day. You know, when I leave the office with my dog, I'd love to be able to go shop and play and, you know, go for happy hour or do, do whatever I do in my daily life with my, with my pet. And what we all realize pretty quickly is that's not always possible. You know, there's a lot of barriers if you're a pet owner trying to integrate a pet like you would a child into right. your daily life. Right. You know, so how do, we, how do we tackle that? What can we do as a business mm -hmm. to really help, you know, maybe break down some of these barriers and really, um, not just break down the barriers, but talk about all the positive things about having pets because the research is so prevalent. It's out there. Everyone knows, um, or they say they know, but do they really know why it's important um, and what pets really do to enhance our lifestyles, our cities? There's a piece of research that Waltham did that shows when um, someone's going to a community and they see you and I out walking their dogs, they feel safer, they feel a sense of community. There's um, another piece of research that showed here in Tennessee, in the South, that more people meet with their dogs than they do at church. They form friendships easier with their dogs than they do at church. Um, so you start seeing some of this and you're like, this is a way of life, this is a you lifestyle. You just have to go to a dog park and you can realize that right Oh, away. it's incredible. Right. I mean, right here at Harlandsdale, which is where I take Nash, my mm -hmm. puppy, I go there, I could be there for hours, not just with Nash, but you're socializing, you're talking, and you're meeting other pets, and you're forming bonds, and you, know, you see that happening all across the country. And so we were kind of mapping all of the research up with the giving that we're doing, and we thought, what if we could help cities be best in class when it comes to pets? And when you look out there, there's no one resource that's pulling all that information together and giving anybody tools on how to do that. And we thought, you know, as Mars Pack here as a business, we could help do that. We know animal welfare well. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of deep roots in that. You know, we work on advocacy, we work on policy. How do we, you know, pull all of that together into a program? And so that's what Better Cities is about. It's, it, it's not, um, it, it's about celebrating pets in, in the best way possible. So if you're, you know, the city of Franklin, if you're Nashville, if you're Austin, if whatever city you are, if you're thinking about how do I become a better city for pets, if mm -hmm. you think about pets as part of your constituent base, mm -hmm. um, because that's what your citizens, you know, yeah. again, I call them, my, it's my new kid, right? right. I, mean, I got a new right. baby, and my new baby is a, is a, right. is a six-month-old Brittany, right. um, along with my two other kids, too. I count, all, <laughs> I count them all. I count them all. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, I, and you have more and more people, we know that, are, feel that way about their pets. So, mm -hmm. you know, how do we design a structure um, in a system that really celebrates and enhances, you know, not just, um, you know, my lifestyle, not mm -hmm. just the dog's lifestyle, but a community's lifestyle too. And so Better Cities for Pets, there's really four key areas that we're looking at. One is around shelters. So, you know, of course, if you wanna be a Better City for Pets, you know, your animal welfare program and your shelter network is critically important to mm -hmm. that. And we've talked a little bit about some of the work that we're doing there, but. And we're going to continue to do these things, um, you know, in this county and in Davidson County and in the surrounding areas with shelter support and adoption events and, you know, mm -hmm. driving awareness to what the shelter and animal welfare system does um, for our pets. That's critically important, foundational, really. Right. But then there's things like homes. So when you do adopt a pet, you know, what does responsible pet ownership look like? And if you're not a pet owner, you know, what can you expect from pet owners? Mm -hmm. You know, if you are out and about and you you know, you don't have a pet and you don't know much about pets and you aren't a pet owner yourself, but you're surrounded by pets, what should you expect? Mm -hmm. You know, what should you expect from the pet owner and from the non-pet owner? Right. You know, how do you, how do you educate? 
We do that little of that at the shelter, but there's right. a, a real, and we have like a sheet, now you've adopted a, a dog, right. what do you do next? Right. But it's impossible to cover everything in two sheets of paper. So there needs, and we also try to, Absolutely. Try to form some kind of support system. So I, I think that's so important because it, people get an animal and they go, well, oh, it ate the garbage, so I'm not real happy with it. I may bring it back. We don't, right. we don't want that. We, we don't want, want that. We want education. We want you just call and say, hey, my pet's eating the garbage. It's, you know, what do I do? And we have resources uh, that we try to give them. So that helps the home too, because right. less return pets to the shelter. <laughs> Absolutely, so people are educated and they understand, they know how to kind of troubleshoot, especially during those first 30, 60 days, which is so critical right. during that bonding time. Right. Um, you know, you don't want someone to get frustrated and say, I can't do this, because there's there are tools and ways um, mm -hmm. to help with integration, just like there is for new babies, right? Right, right. Um, you can't take them back. No, you, you, you certainly can't. You have to, can. you you have to realize. It's a commitment. Um, yeah, it's my commitment. So you've got the the home and the shelters. And what are the other pillars there? Well, the only, the only other, the other thing I want to touch on homes is, so there's the responsible pet ownership piece, but then there's also the access and barriers piece. So mm -hmm. when you think about going to either rent or if you're in a master plan community yep. or if you're in a high rise, a condo, whatever it might be, um, sometimes there's breed restrictions on the kind of breed mm -hmm. you can have or a size restriction right. um, or maybe just a restriction in general. So there's uh, you know some work that we're um, actually working on with uh, the, the city of Nashville on, on you know trying to understand from a developer's point of view from a renter's association or a homeowner's association's mm -hmm. point of view, you know what's the education we can be doing there to help break down some of those barriers. Yeah. So yeah. that kind of fits in the homes pillar. Right. Um, and then play is all around green space and parks and you know beautifying places. Um, and, and not just beautifying them, but making them pet friendly. Mm -hmm. So if you have a park, you know how do you how do you take that park and you know maybe um, there's a couple things that are additive that then make it a pet friendly space. It, mm -hmm. it may not be building a dog park, but what are some other things that you can do? Whether it's hydration stations or right. you know some trails um, that could be a bit more pet friendly. Mm -hmm. um, you know how do you how do you take existing resources? And, and make them more pet friendly. Right. And when you are thinking about adding a dog park, what's a best in class dog park? Or mm -hmm. you know, if you're in a densely urban area and you've got a green space desert, you know, how do you use an innovative concept like a pop-up park, which is mm -hmm. something we just debuted um, last month in Austin at South by Southwest. We kind of created this, again, for densely urban areas where you don't have green space, but maybe you have dead corners or mm -hmm. you know, a, 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 a an uh, alley or uh, that comes out to a main street that's being underutilized or parking right. spaces that are being underutilized. How do you take underutilized space and create, you know, a green space that, for pets? For pet owners. And, and so we did pets. that. Yeah. We did now, that. You partnered with the city of Franklin. I want to get in about our upcoming event. Yes. So the Better Cities for Pets pilot is going to debut in Franklin. Um, yes. What's the date for that big event? So it's actually our fourth pillar, which is around businesses. Um, and we've sat down, actually, we, I, I remember this meeting so vividly. Myself and a couple of colleagues were sitting down with Mayor Moore and um, we're talking to him about this program. We were going through all the pillars and we said, you know, it'd be so cool to do a business pilot program here in Franklin to welcome pets and we could test it and his eyes just I mean, he got so excited. He literally pulled out his phone and started texting, you know, me and my colleagues, numbers of people mm -hmm. who could make this happen. And, you know, some of those people like Laura, you know, from, from the animal, uh, from Williamson County Animal Shelter mm -hmm. and, you know, Christy Williams from the DFA and, and Ellie Chin from the CVB. I mean, these were numbers that were on his speed dial. He was literally texting them to me in that meeting and said, we can do this. You know, wow. I want Franklin to be a part of this. Okay. So what we're doing is um, we're going to kick off this pilot program. It's called Pets Welcome. And through the DFA, um, through Christy's great work and uh, Joni, who um, owns Gray's, uh, through their great work, they have galvanized the city around this program. We have about 80 businesses that are signed up and we're gonna kick it off June 16th. And so really for the summer season here in Franklin, we're gonna be testing this Pets Welcome program where pets can come into businesses, they're welcome to come in. We will, um, you know, it's not just about welcoming, the, welcoming them in, but it's about, you know, educating, mm -hmm. um, you know, the shopkeepers and the retail owners about what that means, but then also people coming in, you know, as they come in with their pets, what, what can they expect? You know, what are the rules? How do you do it? Um, what's It'll best in class? It includes some restaurants too. It absolutely includes businesses. some restaurants. Okay. You know, we did this search uh, with, with the city on the ordinances and you know what are what are the, again what are the barriers that are in place that would prevent us from doing this and and actually what we found is Franklin is very pet friendly from a from an ordinances perspective 
um, but we're looking at some ways to make it even more pet friendly. And so we're taking over downtown, you know, kind of the 16 block radius that is downtown Franklin and some, some other businesses as well that aren't necessarily in downtown are going to be participating. Wow. June 16th will be on the square. We're going to have that pop-up pop -up park. Pop-up park. Well, the okay. pop-up park. Everybody's welcome to come. Everybody's welcome to come. Bring your pets. Um, you know, the mayor will be out there. Mark Johnson, who leads our business, will be out there. And we're going to be talking about what, you know, the Pets Welcome program is all about, what Better Cities for Pets is. And, you know, all this work that we're doing here in, in Franklin and in Williamson County and in Davidson County is all being put into a model. And so what the model is, is it was something that will be shareable. It'll have, you know, it will be research-based. You, you know, probably have seen or mm -hmm. maybe some of your viewers have been already canvassed by either surveys or some research questions that we've asked right. before we've, right. you know, done this program. But we'll have kind of, you know, we'll have the research kind of before. We'll have the feedback during the program and mm -hmm. then um, the a report that comes out so we're all at the parts end. Of, we're all parts of this model. It's we are. Be fun. We so are. We're doing this right here in <laughs> Franklin. We're going to roll this out nationally across wow. the country. It starts at 2 o'clock. From 2 to 4 is the main part of it. And then you'll have other businesses and restaurants around the downtown area will have a sticker that yes. says they're now they're participating in this uh, program, yes. that, the Welcome Pets program. Yes. So we'll all be able to look at that list, see a little map, see where we can go that evening, Friday yes. night. So we'll take our dog to dinner. That'll be a new paradigm. It's a new normal. It is. It's, it's, it'll be the new normal. Yeah. It'll be the new that's normal. That's so exciting because I know that's been going on in Europe for years. It I has mean, been. I mean, you know, you look at other regions across, yeah. across the world. People bring their dogs to restaurants and you never even know they're there. That's and, right. Yeah. It's common practice. Here it's a little different. So it's a new normal and it's a learning process for everybody. Well, yeah. We're running out of time, but this has been so great. Thank I you wanna, so much I for wanna, having me. Oh, you're welcome. I want to tell the date again. Better Cities for Pets kickoff event in downtown Franklin. Uh, that's on the square. It's right June, on the square. Friday, June 16th at 2 p.m. and it will continue through the night and there'll be some activities on Saturday. So as the time gets closer, there will be. Uh, they should follow, Bring your dogs. follow you on Facebook for yes. the latest. Yes. And that Facebook page is Mars Pet Care, A Better World for Pets. That's right. Okay. Uh, I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and, yeah. and my new it, little friend. Your new friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to mention to our viewers there are some upcoming events the shelters participating in on Saturday, May 6th. We'll be out at Crockett Elementary School for an event and we'll be at the Pet Sense in Fairview. Then on the 27th of May, we'll have our monthly rabies, uh, $10 rabies shots and $15 microchips clinic at the shelter. That's from 9 to 11. Uh, we will be closed Memorial Day and then, of course, we'll be uh, out at this Franklin Square on Friday, June 16th, and you will see shelter dogs there because shelter dogs are the best, rescue dogs are the best, and they deserve a go to a restaurant just as much as anybody else. Uh, so let's make Franklin, uh, this project that Mars is doing in Franklin, a huge success by showing up that Friday with our dogs, and let's create a new normal where uh, pets are part of the family and they go everywhere with us. I hope you've enjoyed our talk today with Jam Stewart from Mars Pet Care and all the things that they're doing in our community. We, we ran out of time. We'll probably have to do this again just to tell you what <laughs> all the things Mars does. But uh, I hope to see you next time on Pet Watch. If I conferred with our furry friends, man to animal, think of the amazing repartee. If I could walk with the animals, talk with the animals, grunt and squeak and squawk with the animals, and they could talk to me. Bricks. Sturdy, heavy, hard, smooth, rough, narrow, wide, ignored as ordinary, yet formed with ancient skills. Bricks offer security without aggression. White to black, rose to cream to gray, touches of purple, magenta, vermilion. The history and moods of earth are revealed in, by their presence. Used for strength, yet brittle. Bricks shed chips when tumbled, but last centuries stack tightly. They stand steady, offer the pleasures of earth, a sense of time, rarely intrude, simply wait for the observer's eye. <laughs>